So let's talk more about this condition or is it an infection? Let's just find out from the doctor and also a dietitian. In studio I have with me Dr. Eric Moronga. He's a gastroenterologist. I've said it right. Yes. <laughs> and Wadjiko Jenga, who's a dietitian. Welcome both to the program. Let me start with you, Daktari. What is the common cause of H. pylori and why are we seeing a sort of recurrence of this condition in this country? Yeah, thanks very much for the question. H. pylori is uh, a bacteria. That's the name of a bacteria that usually in, uh, infects or invades the stomach. Mm -hmm. And uh, once it's in the stomach, it can cause a lot of problems like ulcers, gastritis, and even cancer. Mm -hmm. So this is something that has always been with us. Uh, I don't think there's a big new epidemic. It's just that it's being recognized more and more. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're hearing a lot about it these mm -hmm. days. Maybe you can explain more about how this bacteria affects the stomach lining? Well, you In know, layman's term. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are bacteria that uh, most people acquire during childhood. Mm -hmm. So it can stay in your body for many years, even though you never got sick as a child, and just remains quiet. And then when you grow up, you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, that's when it starts causing problems by invading mm -hmm. and affecting the cells, making the cells inside the stomach mm -hmm. uh, more susceptible to getting ulcers. Uh, you know, you might have a small trigger, like maybe you take a pain medicine like aspirin, mm -hmm. but if the H. pylori is in there already, so it makes it easier for these other things to cause problems in the stomach. Mm -hmm. and does, th does this also vary with uh, age? Because I see some of the common causes are food and stress. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the stress doesn't really cause the infection. What mm -hmm. it does is that it just can make you have more symptoms by, uh, you know, producing adrenaline and things like that. So it's just that the symptoms of H. pylori is what we see. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody comes with pain. You know, the H. pylori has probably caused an ulcer and now they have pain. Mm -hmm. And if that's treated, the ulcer will heal. So that's, that's what happens. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, these are just compounded by maybe, uh, you know, you ate the wrong thing or you took the wrong medicine mm -hmm. uh, or you get stressed. It just makes it more apparent. All right. We'll talk about the medi uh, medi medicine part because I also wanted to understand that. But Wanjiko, as a dietitian, what are some of the foods that one needs to avoid? All right. Um, before we go to the foods that someone has to avoid, I think it's important for people to know that food hygiene is very important. Okay. Okay. Especially for fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. If you're out there, you're not at home, you've gone to eat, um, you do not know the type of water that has been used to cook food or to clean the vegetables. How clean was the person who was handling the food? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when it comes to what you're consuming, we have high fatty foods will will can irritate, can worsen the symptoms. Foods that have a lot of spices, mm -hmm. um, carbonated drinks, alcohol. The sodas. So, um, yes, mm -hmm. the fizzy, fizzy drinks. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's also important to note that what may work for you will not work for someone else. What irritates you will not irritate like a dog over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. So those, those are the main uh, things that you should avoid um, in order to, you know, get yourself treated but now there's a sort of a diagnosis that people fear endoscopy tell us about endoscopy because it one one patient when he or she hears that or is told by the doctor that you you have to undergo endoscopy so that we find out uh, what is really bugging your stomach they really fear because they 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 think that uh, you know the endos the the machine or the pipe is going to affect their throat probably you can expand more on endoscopy. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, endoscopy is a procedure where there's a pipe with a camera that goes through your mouth and checks the stomach and the digestive system, especially the upper, the esophagus and the small intestine. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually people are sedated. Right. So it's not painful because you'll be asleep. And the main reason why it's done is to rule out something more serious. You know, you might have H. pylori infection, and you know, but that, and, and you have the pain. But there might also be, because H. pylori, I said, can cause, can, uh, can cause an ulcer. It can also cause cancer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just because it's H. pylori and you get treated, you know, we need to make sure there's nothing more serious like cancer. 
And so it doesn't mean that everybody who has H. pylori should get um, endoscopy. endoscopy. Mm -hmm. uh, usually you try to categorize the risk of this person. And primarily, number one is age. So somebody over the age of 40 or 45, if they have these symptoms, it's good to check if it's an older person. If it's somebody who's 20 years old and they come in with this, mm -hmm. we're not going to recommend that as a first line. Mm -hmm. Only unless if there are other things which are more uh, concerning. Let's say now they're having blood, mm -hmm. vomiting blood, or they are losing weight, or you know, the symptoms are, are just bad enough that they're throwing up mm -hmm. all over. You know, then you, you want to think that this could be more than just a simple infection. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important in select cases to do endoscopy because but, then you'll find something before it mm -hmm. becomes a big problem. I want to know, why does H. pylori recur? Because you, you, you are told or advised by the doctor to you know, finish or complete the kit. You know, mm -hmm. And that kit is also expensive, yeah. so to speak. Mm -hmm. But why does it recur? And what are you supposed to do when it recurs? Uh, the main reason why it seems like it's recurring is because of drug resistance. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of times, you know, people buy antibiotics by themselves, just go to the shop and get some medicines. So over time, these bugs get used to the common antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So that's when you find that you get this kit and it's not working. It's because the bug is used to these drugs. Mm -hmm. So in such cases, you might take the medicine, feel better for a week or a month, and then you start getting worse again. And then initially you might take it and then you get tested and it's negative. Mm -hmm. And then later on it's positive. And it might look like a recurrence. It may not be. It might be that there was resistance, right. but it was kind of partial, so the numbers went down, the tests were negative. Mm -hmm. But then if you wait later, you test and it's positive, mm -hmm. and then you find that it's still there. So really what we're doing now is we're trying to tailor the, t uh, the kind of medication they're giving mm -hmm. to try and anticipate that resistance. So, okay. um, you know, a lot of times we try to give... Uh, you know, what used to be second-line medication, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's almost becoming first-line now, and, and this can help reduce uh, the amount of resistance. In fact, mm -hmm. the studies which have been done and are going on right now, mm -hmm. uh, locally and internationally, finding very high rates of resistance to the usual mm -hmm. medications. Okay, Wanjiko, coming back to you as a dietitian, um, we are telling people, we are telling Kenyans to modify their diet. Mm -hmm. How can they do that? Okay. What advice are you going to give them? Hmm. Ad advice, uh, they should have small frequent meals. Not, most people are used to having two or one meal in a day. Mm -hmm. So your breakfast, you can have a snack, then your lunch, another snack, then your dinner. So then by reducing your portions, you're also able to control the rate of digestion. Mm -hmm. There's also probiotics. Probiotics are the good bacteria that are found in the digestive system. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it helps to... It aids in digestion. It also um, control inhibits the bad bacteria from thriving. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we can get probiotics from yogurt. Also, when you go to the doctor, also yogurt is good. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but the amount of uh, probiotics in uh, yogurt is just enough for maintaining the gut health. So that's why you, when you go to the doctor, he may end up or a dietitian, they may end up prescribing now probiotics, which is more of a therapeutic now drug mm -hmm. okay um, also it's important to have to observe your fiber sources of fiber fiber is also very important mm -hmm. um, and we get that from whole grains and the fruits and vegetables mainly um, bananas mainly mm. bananas <laughs> mainly bananas right <laughs> apple all right okay mm -hmm. um, cabbage is a source of fiber as well um, exercise is also very important, mm -hmm. okay? Five times a week, minimum 30 minutes. Minimum 30 minutes? Yes. Now, Dr. Tari, as we wind up, I just want to know, will Kenyans, you know, take up this advices from dietitians and doctors like you? Because this is a lifestyle problem. It's a lifestyle disease. How can we get rid of it in this country? I think the Kenyans will do that. Uh, the more we get uh, the information out there, and thanks to uh, people like you and stations like this, the word is getting out there. We can take better care of ourselves with our diets. Uh, if we have uh, some pain, let's not assume it's something simple. Let's get checked before it becomes uh, something very serious. Uh, you know, we're talking about cancer. H. pylori is one of the major causes mm -hmm. of stomach cancer. So if, and it doesn't mean everybody should be tested. We only test people who have symptoms. So you don't need to rush 
to get tested if you're fine. Mm -hmm. But if there's pain, that means now it's starting to cause problems. So that should get tested, treated on time. And those who are above a certain age or have certain symptoms, get an endoscopy so that things can be found when they're manageable. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to get there. Uh, you know, the authorities, the government, we hear people are importing maize with aflatoxin. Mm -hmm. That is a carcinogen. What is being done about uh, that situation? You know, uh, sugar with mercury, you know, it's coming in, then it disappears from, uh, you know, the evidence uh, where it was stored. And, you know, these are things that can be done systemically mm -hmm. before we build cancer hospitals. Okay. That can actually be a preventative thing. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going to happen. All right. Uh, as we end this discussion, Manjiko, I'm going to end with you. Do you get patients um, that have, you know, suffered H. pylori mm -hmm. um, or gastritis and they want to get better? And do you actually advise them and do they actually get better? Because that's the question. Do they actually get better after they change or modify their diet? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have quite, I've seen quite a number of patients with the said conditions. And for those people that modify their lifestyle, they're able to see positive changes. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are some who will come back and tell you, you really, really helped me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll really emphasize on the use of probiotics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it works. It works. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Wanjiko Jenga. She's a dietitian and Dr. Eric Murunga. I'll try and say it right this time. Gastroenterologist. I've said it. <laughs> Thank you both for this discussion and for enlightening Kenyans on what they need to do. If you have a stomach upset, then get checked. You might be suffering from H. pylori or gastro.